Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Zoomtopia studio. I'm Ronnie Brandt, and I'm joined here today with Zayas Caravalla. So we're going to have a quick discussion about many great things here, but I want to start with what are your impressions this morning uh, coming out of the Zoomtopia keynote, some of the new things that you heard from us? Uh, yeah, I like the keynote, right? The, one of the things I like about Zoom is uh, you've had the innovation engine going ever since the company was founded. Uh, I think um, the docs announcement probably surprised a lot of people, but uh, you know, at our analyst conference uh, earlier in the summer, one of the analysts asked Eric uh, about would they actually enter the space, and his response was, wait till Zoomtopia. So I kind of had a feeling it was coming. Uh, when I first heard about it, though, I thought, I don't know if the world needs another docs platform. But then, you know, when they described it, how they're trying to redefine the document from being a fixed eight and a half by 11, you know, piece of real estate that you print to something that's that breathes and lives and is a lot more interactive, that to me made sense. And frankly, that's what you know, Zoom is good at. And so Zoom's always been good at facilitating and empowering teams. Zoom Docs is about teams, where traditional docs is really more about individuals, right? And I think when you put those things together, I also liked a lot of the, uh, you know, the focus on AI. Obviously, the bigger the Zoom platform gets, yeah. it's harder and harder to derive insights from it, right? So, uh, but I thought overall, I thought the keynotes were positive. There's a lot of announcements uh, and you can just see how much uh, how fast the innovation train is going. I thought one of the more interesting was the context center slide. Yeah. That all those announcements that they've had in the six months since they launched the product, that, that's, um, that, that's a lot of stuff. Yeah, since contact center came out, there's yeah. been over 600 features in the last 18 months alone. Yeah. So that's a lot of features. Speaking of CX and AI, uh, what are some of your impressions on some of the latest things that are coming to CX and AI and even some of the announcements you heard today around that? Yeah, I think... Um, AI becomes uh, a mand mandatory part of CX and, frankly, EX as well, right? If, if you think about the workforce we have today, it's highly distributed, it's highly dynamic, and the old ways of working and managing don't really work today. So if you, if you take a contact center, for example, right, the way a contact center got managed is you had a manager actually walking around this building listening for audible cues of calls that were going awry. I mean, it's the, that hasn't changed since we've had contact centers, right? And so if all my agents are no longer in that location, now I need a new way to do it. And so the data and analytics that you get out of a platform like Zoom can actually help you manage people differently. It can help you learn their strengths, learn their, we learn their weaknesses, and that all drives to a better overall customer experience. And so I think, uh, you know, when you look at the industry data that 90% of companies say they compete in customer experience. It's the number one brand differentiator. The only way you can really execute on that is with AI. And when you think about that, because you started describing the supervisor experience in customer service, yeah. but also the employee experience. Yeah. Because you're shifting these hybrid call centers and these hybrid customer service teams. C agents are asked to do more than ever. They're revenue machines. They're upsell machines. They're problem solvers. Like, What are some of the big trends and changes that you're seeing to that all these people are asked to do and try to make their customers happy. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, with the evolution of tech, right? I mean, typically uh, develop tech in silos or solutions to solve very specific problems. And then what happens is you wind up at the legacy contact center for voice, you bring in something for virtual agents, you bring in something for chat, you bring in something for email. And I understand why it's these things were developed in silos, but the integration point for that technology is the agent. And so you're expecting the agent to be able to look at your CRM system, you know, the, the, the contact center dashboard, the UC dashboard, and actually be able to synthesize all that data and make decisions off it very quickly, and they can't. And then you wind up in the situation today where, you, you know, you call into a contact center, it asks you for a phone number, you put it in, you go to an agent, they ask you again, and it's very frustrating, right? And so I think what AI does for the agent is it, frankly, it makes them a super agent because... It synthesizes and analyzes all that data for them, gives them recommendations of the next best action or recommendations of what to say, or even gives them some historical information on what that customer has gone through before. It, it just allows that agent to provide a level of customer service that even the best and most seasoned agent couldn't do before. And so, like I said, I think it makes agents super agents. And so it's not something that I think takes away from what they do. It simply adds to what they do. So... You talked about how one piece of technology gets stacked on top of another, gets stacked on top yeah, of that's another, stacked. stacked on another. <laughs> well, what are some of the benefits that you see of an organization actually integrating it and making it a singular, cohesive experience, if it's even able to be pulled off? 
Yeah, well, so the term integrated is an interesting one because I think a lot of your competitors claim integrated. And what they've done is they've created a license bundle for all the different products. So integrated means integrated at a data layer, right? And, uh, and I think um, some of the more basic use cases are even just something like you announced unified search today, yeah. right? So if you think about the way you work today, uh, it's not uncommon for me to have received a document, but then I can't remember, was it in Zoom chat or did it come through email? And then I've got to go search both, mm -hmm. right? And you, again, we make, we put an awful lot of emphasis on the user to be, to be the integration point. And so today, one of the data points of my research is users spend about 40% of the time managing work, right? 40%. Now we've only got so many hours in a day and everybody complains about not having time. So if you can help me take that 40%, and make it 20%, make it 10%, eliminate it all together, now I can be a lot more productive mm -hmm. because I'm not doing a lot of this menial stuff that I had to do before. And so I think this industry does need to shift the platform because we need to be able to, to bring all that data together under a single portfolio, right? And I think that's, that, that has been a very difficult thing for companies to do historically. And one last question, because in talking about all the different tools you need, how important is it to actually take advantage of an ecosystem or build an ecosystem as a comms company? Yeah, well, I think- Work we safely. Yeah, no, you know, ecosystem is very important. To me, to me, ecosystem is really what separates platforms from vendors that call themselves platforms, right? So if you think of all the big software companies in the world, the Salesforce and Microsoft and Oracle, what's the one common out of the app? They all have massive ecosystems around them. And that creates this exponential benefit for the customer where the data you're looking at and the analysis that you're doing and the AI that you're applying isn't to just this uh, uh, silo data set, but to the whole ecosystem. And so when you, so take CX, for example. I, mean, I know the contact center industry likes to think of themselves as the CX industry, but they're not. They're a piece of it, right? You also have um, you know, front-end marketing. You have sales execution, right? You, you have a, a web analytics. You have all these companies that play in the CX ecosystem. If you really want to understand customer behavior, you need to be able to analyze the information across that ecosystem. And that's what I see Zoom building now is really not just being Zoom centric, but, but being ecosystem centric and being able to bring all those data sources together. And so if good data leads to good insights, silo data leads to fragmented insights. And unfortunately in the industry, we do have a lot of silos of data, but I, but I do think the platform approach uh, does deliver, like I said, exponential value to companies. And, and it's been, again, proven out that all the big software companies are ecosystem companies because that delivers more value to customers. So we joked about a crystal ball this morning where you can look into the future and predict what's going to happen. So if you could pull out your own crystal ball, fast forward a year, what does it look like for CX and what does it look like for the employee experience a year from now? Yeah, I, th I think a year from now, I don't think it's vastly different. I think if you project to two, three, four, five years though, I, I do think as more and more um, tech savvy workers enter the workforce, the Gen Z's, the millennials, I do think they will start demanding. What's up? So that it's an interesting challenge for companies today because a lot of the younger workers aren't swayed by money, right? The, the, they, they don't go to the company that pays them the most. They want to go to a company that makes them successful and it's technology that ultimately makes them successful. And so the organizations that make the investments in the right tools and processes will ultimately be the ones that hire the best employees and gain them competitive advantage. And so I think, you know, this industry is one that's historically been very fragmented and it is going to migrate to platform. And I think you see the worlds of CX and the X colliding. But to me, the big differentiator um, is, gonna, is going to be artificial intelligence AI, right? So I think we're at a kind of a tipping point for the industry now where competitive differentiation was based on license bundles and things like that. But I do think it's going to be AI and it's the company, the vendor that's able to provide the best insights that are actionable for the user that winds up taking the lion's share of the industry. And I, I, I think that's, um, we're, we're really, we're just at the starting point of that right now. Um, and you can thank generative AI for that. Uh, but I, but I do think it, there's a lot more awareness of it now uh, at a business leader level, not just at the IT level. Well, Zayas, thank you for joining us thank here you. today. Again, we're here at Zoomtopia Studios. I'm Roddy. This was Zayas from ZK Research and hope you enjoyed. Thank you. See you next time.